I'm painting a blue wizard, much like the previous blue wizard I painted on stream, this guy. However, this guy was painted with uh, normal layer paint. Um, and so today we're going to do the same thing, paint another blue wizard, slightly different paint scheme, but with contrast paint. Uh, contrast paint is this stuff. It's made by Games Workshop or Citadel. Um, it's If you can hear it, it's very watery. Um, I'll pop one open so you can see. It's a... Uh, it's almost like liquid in there. It doesn't come across super well, but uh, let's see if I can find one. There we go. There's a half full one, as you can see in there. It's quite liquidy, basically like colored water, basically, as opposed to, you know, a normal paint, which is pretty solid. So the uh, the big deal about contrast paint is that you can apply it um, to just apply it on a piece and it will give you shadows, highlights, and base coat all in one go to a greater or lesser extent, depending on the color. Uh, so I'm going to start off with Talisar Blue. Oh, uh, I should also say this miniature, uh, he was primed black, as you can see sort of under here. And then from about a 45 degree angle or so, uh, maybe a little, maybe 60 degrees in some places, I just sprayed, so sort of like at this angle, I sprayed white down on top of it, and that gives us some shadows already on the miniature, as you can see. And because the paint we're using today is all transparent, those shadows are going to remain and help the contrast paint do what it needs to do. <laughs> wow, what a good looking robe. And I haven't even painted it yet. That's how good I am. All right, so like I said, I'm starting with Talisar Blue. And I'm just going to do all of the robes and his hat in this color. So as you can see, as I put it on, we maintain the shadows that are underneath the paint. But also color the area. So basically this is going to be a, a three-step process all done with a single brush. Or a single color, rather. So it's very useful for... It's useful for several things. Uh, it's useful if you're brand new to painting and don't really care about learning super advanced techniques or anything. Just want your stuff painted. This will go... This will get you real quick. Also, um, for people who are more advanced already but just want to get stuff done, it's great for that. Um, and then it's also good, uh, even if you don't want to paint your entire miniature in it, it's nice to be able to incorporate some of them into your everyday painting, even if you aren't, uh, even if you aren't new and even if you are using more advanced techniques, they can be quite useful tools in other situations also. But today I'm just focusing on how you can use these as a new painter just to, to get some good results without really much skill at all. Um, basically if you can, if you can color between the lines, you can use this paint effectively. And <laughs> most of us learned coloring between the lines at a young age. So if you can maintain that, you can use contrast paint. Um, the one thing you do need to be careful of with contrast paint is that normally, like on our other blue wizard, we started with the dark blue, then went up to the light blue. You can't do that with contrast paint. You have to do it the reverse with contrast paint. Because if you put a dark color down, because it's transparent, if you then try to layer a light color on top of it, you won't see the light color. So in this case, we're starting with the lighter blue, and then afterward, we'll come back and put a darker blue down in a couple places. You honestly don't need to, but I'm going to, I'm going to today. But as you can see, it's kind of coming off the edges of the cloak, going down into the recesses of the cloak, and giving us a almost a three-tone color pattern already with just the one color being applied. The, um, 
needing to do the dark colors or the light colors first rather also means that you need to be a little more careful than with um, normal paint. Normal paint, if you make a mistake, you can just paint over it. Uh, contrast paint, you absolutely can just paint over. Uh, the difference will be you'd have to lay down uh, some sort of color first and then reapply your contrast paint. Because if, for instance, if I make a mistake and get blue on something I'm going to paint red, I can't just layer that red contrast paint over the blue because it'll come out purple. So I would have to lay down my white again and then go back and lay down my red contrast paint. But I think that the the couple limitations that do exist for the range are made up for and then some by the results you can get with the paint. So like right there, I got some blue on his shoe there. His shoe is not going to be blue, but his shoe is going to be a dark color. So I don't need to fix that because when I come back and paint over it with the dark color, it will cover right over the blue. No problem. All right. Just trying to figure out what things on him are actually part of his robes here. That can be a struggle sometimes. I'm going to reshake my paint. Um, I usually paint sometimes off camera, but I paint by getting the paint out of the little top scoop thing here. And with normal paint, layer paint, you can paint like, I don't know, you can probably paint 20 models before you ran out of paint in that little cup up top. Contrast paint, because it's so liquidy, will run down and that cup will empty much quicker. So you will often find that you have to reshake the paint every now and again while using. Not a big deal, but just something to keep in mind. That's why I'm having to reshake the paint. Okay. Almost done here. And as with most of these uh, beginner streams, I will I'll talk about a couple stopping places with the contrast paint, where if you're, if you're just looking to get models finished on the table, there are some stopping places that you don't need to go any farther necessarily. But if you do want to get results that are a little more advanced, you can continue right along. And then the great thing about contrast paint is that the the early stopping points give you a much better paint scheme, or a much better paint result, I guess, than the stopping places of normal paint. If you remember on the first, if you watch the first Blue Wizard, our first stopping point was just a base coat on everything. Which is fine, absolutely nothing wrong with it. But our base coat on this is already, as you can see, got some shadow, some highlight, and some base coat. So it's already going to be much more involved. So now I'm going to do the hat in the same color. And while I'm sure that you can put this contrast paint on too thick, I have yet to encounter a time where I actually have. Um, I'm sure with very deep recesses, you could put it on so thick that it would just take forever to dry. But honestly, you can load your brush up and just slather it on there. And it'll figure it out and do its thing. Um, normally, if you put paint on, even if you put like a wash on too thick, it'll either not dry, cover detail, or it'll dry super glossy. The the wizards at Contrast Paint, or at a uh, rather at Games Workshop who made this paint, have uh, have put some something in it that will that means that it dries matte. In other words, not shiny. Pretty much, no matter what you do to it. So that's another 
it's just like it's basically beginner proof you can't uh you can't really mess it up all right so there's the blue applied and as you can see with a single color just out of the pot he's got some shading some highlighting and then obviously a base coat so that's the power of this contrast paint so now the the one thing to keep in mind and what i'm thinking about right now is that because the contrast paint stays wetter for longer because it's so liquidy you don't want to paint right up next to a color you just did immediately after so i might want to go and paint this but i don't want to do that yet because there's a line of blue right here that's still drying and i don't want to mix those two colors so i think i'm going to do his uh beard and i'm going to do that in i'll do apothecary white make his beard pretty light colored today so i'm doing apothecary white it's a it's called white it's really more of a gray um but what it's intended for is you prime something a very pale color like his beard for instance and then you lay this down and it will slide off the highest points and go into the recesses and give you a really nice shaded off-white light gray color so that's what we're going to do with his beard here and the zenithal uh, which is what the priming black and then spraying white from an angle is called the zenithal will help us a lot with this especially on the beard so there's so many little details and having to having to paint the details on a, that beard would obviously be doable but that was maybe 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds of paint. And looks a little weird right now because there's so many other things on him that are still white. But once we're all done, that was 15 seconds of a beard that will look just fine. So now I'm going to do the all the leather on him. He's got, I'm going to paint this part in leather here. And he's got some pouches and stuff on the side of him, his belt, stuff like that. I'm going to do that all in appropriately snake bite leather. I'm just going to give it a good shake. Uh, contrast paint, if you're going to work with it, uh, it requires a little bit more shaking up front than other paint does. It likes to settle if you leave it for too long. So something to keep in mind. Most, uh, most normal acrylic paint, you can shake it for really just give it a couple shakes and it'll be all good. But contrast paint you gotta shake it a little bit more so I'm being very careful not to mix with the blue here but also to get good coverage of all the leather uh, the one thing that contrast paint does not have is a way to do metallic colors um, you will if you want true metallic you will have to go use normal metallic paint. Um, you can absolutely cover metallic paint with contrast paint to get a, a color of metal, but there is no actual metallic contrast paint, unfortunately. I don't know if that would even technically be possible, but uh, it doesn't exist currently. Alrighty, so there's that. I'm just gonna look. Doesn't look like he has any leather up here. That could be leather, but I'm not gonna do it in all leather color. I think now I will do his skin real quick. Skin is one of the places where contrast paint really shines. Um, I'm gonna use. There's about three or four different skin tones that come in the contrast line. Some are darker, some are lighter. I'm going to use a, one of the darker ones. This is called Fire Slayer Flesh. It's a, I'd say a medium dark skin tone. So I'm just going to put 
this on the hands and a little bit on the face. And I am going to use a darker color on the staff, so I'm not going to be too careful about where this ends up. I am going to be super careful around this parchment, though, because this parchment is going to be a lighter color. So I don't want to get any of this darker color onto it. Just a little bit in the shadow, or in the, the creases right there, won't be a problem. I'm just going to put a little bit on his face. Up there like that. Maybe a dot in there. Good. And there's his skin done. Alright. I'm going to do the staff next, I think. I'm going to use one of my favorite contrast colors. It's called Gore Grunta Fur. Uh, if, if you think these names are a little strange, uh, that's a product of Games Workshop. They always name their colors after models or armies or some part of the of the game and so uh a gore grunta is a orc riding a giant wild boar so that's why their names are a little funky but this is sort of like a reddish brown color and uh so i'm going to use it for the staff here Making sure not to get any on this ribbon or whatever this thing is here. Oh, and I see I've got some blue on that ribbon, so it'll be a good opportunity to come back and show you how to fix that if that does happen. Because it can. There's also some, as you can see, right there on the finger. I'm not worried about that, though. That's too small for me to care. If this were a competition piece or something, sure. But this isn't, so it will be just fine. Well, I missed a little bit of the bag back here, and I'm just going to take the current color I'm working with and just put it on there. And it's not the same color as the leather, but it's darker and it's kind of hidden back there, so it'll just look like shadow. All right. I'm going to do the boots now real quick. I'm going to do them in Black Templar, just your basic black contrast paint. And this, like I said, this will cover, got some blue there on the boot. This will cover that right up, no problem. Just like that. And done. Perfect. All right. So... Just have a couple colors left before the first stopping point if you wanted to. I'm going to do the parchment. I'm going to do that with Skeleton Horde. And I'm going to do something on this miniature um, that I haven't done before. Normally we do... Oh, there's a little bit of blue right there. I'll fix that later. Um, normally I give stopping points and then after the stopping point I continue either with some hot more highlights or some shading or something like that. Today, after the first stopping point, I'm going to show you something that you can do to your miniatures to take them up a level, but that doesn't require you to add more paint to every single part of the miniature like we normally do. So for instance, like with this first, first guy we did, did all the base coats, and then I went back and did the highlight of the light blue, the highlight of the lighter brown, the highlight on the leather, the highlight on the beard, the highlight on the silver, all that. So we basically had to go back and paint on every section of the miniature again, which is a perfectly valid way to do it. But I'm going to show you a way that you can make your miniature look better than he necessarily is, he or she, uh, without having to do all that. So now I'm going to fix that little spot on the parchment there. So I'm just going to take a light color. I'm going to use Vampiric Highlight in this case. My go-to white. 
and I'm just gonna get a little bit of it and just cover over the blue here. Just like that. And then also over here, like that. And then I'll just come back. And honestly, I could probably leave that part as just a highlight on that, but <laughs> might come back and color it back over later. So now I'm gonna do the only part that isn't contrast on this miniature, which is gonna be this and this down here, which is the metallic color. As I said, there is no uh, metallic contrast paint, unfortunately, so you do have to use real metallic paint. I'm just gonna use a medium silver iron breaker in this case. And I am gonna put contrast over this just to make the miniature completely contrasty. So I'm just gonna coat this. Looks like a, I guess it's a dragon head, but it kind of looks like a fish up there. Um, but yeah, I want this stuff to be gold. So I'm gonna start with silver and then I'm gonna take some contrast paint and paint over it to make it look like gold. Okay, looks about right. So let me just have this little ribbon thing or something hanging out right there. Um, just for fun, just to put a bit of color on him, I'll use, hmm, I'll use the color that I can't find. Interesting. Okay, well, aha, there it is. Is it common to mix a medium with contrast paint, or is it not recommended to use that method? I wouldn't say it's not recommended. Uh, I'm sure many people do. I personally don't because I'm, well, A, this series is called Straight from the Pot for a reason. 99% uh, of my painting is done, as you see, straight from the pot without any mixing or thinning or something. Not necessarily the best strategy in the world, um, but a strategy that works for me. Um, but you, there is specifically uh, something called contrast medium, which is used to thin down contrast paint if you want it thinner. Um, so very specifically, though, your question, is it common to mix a medium with contrast paint? Uh, if you're going to thin contrast paint, it needs to be an actual acrylic medium, not just water. Um, the, the qualities especially the surface tension of the contrast paint requires a certain mix of medium and pigment and all that stuff in it. And I don't know the exact science. This is just anecdotally. But if you mix water in it, you're going to mess up that balance of all the things. And so you won't get a contrast result. You'll get tide marks and all sorts of weird stuff. So if you are going to thin or mix contrast paint, it needs to be with an acrylic medium it can be the one that they give you, uh, they they sell to you, or it can be, as far as I understand, it can be any acrylic medium. Um, if I were going to do it, I would probably use the contrast medium that they sell just because I know 100% that is going to work with their product. But I doubt it's a requirement, to be honest. All right, so I'm just making sure the silver is dry. I think it is. So I'm going to do the last contrast paint on here. And this will be our first stopping point. So I'm going to use... Oh, and on the on the little ribbon thing there, that was just Mago's purple. Very light purple color. So now I'm going to use some Yand and Yellow. Just the basic contrast yellow. I'm going to paint it over this silver just to make the silver look like gold. I think the silver probably isn't 100% dry just yet, but it's okay. The effect will still work just fine. There we go. Almost. And boom. All right, so there's our there's our gold details on the staff with some silver paint plus a little bit of contrast paint. I think that works great. All right. So there's our first stopping point. 
This could be, besides the base, this could be a completely finished model. No problem, put them on the table, call it a day. So like I said, for this next step, um, I'm not gonna go in and highlight and do all this stuff all over the model. I'm just gonna do a, one thing to bring up the fidelity of the uh, paint scheme. So I'm gonna start with, I think some Blood Angels Red your medium red contrast paint, and then I'm gonna use some Basilicum Gray afterward. And I'm looking at this big piece of parchment here, and I'm just gonna do a super simple freehand on it. And because this freehand is gonna be much more detailed than the rest of the model, uh, just adding this freehand will bring up the quality of the paint job. Assuming I can actually achieve this, we're gonna see. Uh, just with this one thing. So I'm in my head, I'm imagining like the beginning of the cartoon Robin Hood movie. If you've seen that movie, it starts off, they open a book and in the book, there's a like oldie times looking book with a big letter in the front and then smaller writing. So I'm thinking about that sort of thing. Um, I am going to do, I'm just thinking of a letter that's easy to draw. And I think I'm going to start with an H. I was going to start with an A, but then I realized I don't want him to be considered an adulterer. We don't need any scarlet letters here, so I'm going to do an H. And because this paint is so thin, it makes drawing like this much easier. It's almost like calligraphy ink. So I'm just going to draw in an H here. Like that. And then I'm gonna give it a little give it a little filigree or something around it. That'll work. And then I'm gonna take the basilicum gray that I mentioned a second ago. And I'm just going to run little tiny lines across the parchment like the text. I'm not going to write out each individual letter. That would be... Some people can absolutely do that. Me, not one of them. So there's a little bit too much moisture on my brush for this to work. So I'm just wiping it off and trying again. This might take a couple passes with this Basilicum Gray. It's not the, not the darkest of colors. But that's okay if he's running around with a scroll out in the wilderness. He, uh, it might be getting rained on or who knows what. So. Not the end of the world. If it's a little faded. All right, so there you go, just like that. Simple, draw a letter and put some white line or some, some writing lines across the scroll. Just doing that has taken the fidelity of the paint job up a notch. So then that could be your finished model right there. But if we wanted to continue a little bit more, now what I'm gonna do is find some areas of con that are already covered in contrast paint, obviously, because everything is and just see what I could change. So the most obvious thing on him would be this ring around his hat, the ring around the bottom of his cloak, and the rings on the cuffs of the cloak. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna do, it's already blue, so I'm gonna stick with blue, but I'm gonna go to a darker blue. And for this, I think I will use ultramarine blue. It's a little covered there, but. <laughs> Ultramarine blue, just a darker blue than the uh, than the Talisar blue we used at the beginning. This one has sat for a while, so I'm really going to give it a shake. And then I'm just going to go in and paint all these bits that I was talking about. So I'll start at the hat. I'm just going to paint this ring in this darker blue. There we 
go. And then this ring on his robe back here. And this step of basically adding more contrast paint on top of existing contrast paint you can almost do this forever without any trouble because the contrast paint is so thin that it will almost never obscure your details. And then on his cuffs here, I'm just going to do it on the outside of the cuffs, not in here. In my head, um, the, the fabric has not necessarily changed color. This is just a decorative piece sewn onto the cuffs. So the inside of the cuffs would be the same color as the rest of the robe. Not a huge difference, to be honest, but little things like that are I enjoy thinking about. How would this actually function in the world? You could just paint them this darker blue, too, though. Not a big deal. Alright, just do the back side of this. Make sure to get this up here. Easiest way to add a decorative touch. Yep, there you go. Alrighty, so that's that. Now, I'm trying to think what else we could do to just punch this up a little bit. I think we're going to go back to our Basilicum Gray. We're just going to add a couple highlights to the beard. The beard is probably fine how it is, but never have too many shadows and highlights. I mean, I'm sure you can, but. So I'm just going to go in in the big areas, the big lines of the beard here, and just put this Basilicum Gray into it just to give some definition to a couple parts here. like that. That looks good. And then maybe one over here. There we go. Just for a little bit more definition to the beard. And then let's see what else we could do. I think I think I will just add a little bit more shadow to these blue robes. So I'm going to pull out a third blue here. This blue is super duper dark. Assuming I can find it. Here it is. As you can see, it's, a, it's almost black. It's so dark. It's called Leviathan Blue. That looks slick with the darker lines. Thanks. Okay. It's dribbles of soap and some crumbs in it. Yeah, that would be... That would be cool, actually. Use some texture to put, like stuff in the beard. So I'm going to take this, get the hair off my brush, I'm going to take this really dark blue and I'm just going to put it very carefully in the deep folds of the robe here. So like right here, I'll put a line of it. Um, and you can use the existing contrast paint to sort of guide you into these lines. So where the where the contrast paint is already collecting, I'm just going to put this darker color down just to solidify the shadow areas. I'm going to leave that actually. I was going to put some in the sleeve, but I'm going to leave it how it is. Just going to put a little bit, and I'm going to go over both the dark and lighter blue here just to tie them together. Do one back here and here. I'm going to do this shadow a little bit wider. As you can see, I came out on the, the robe a little bit more on this one because the sh the uh, hood is here so it would be providing a little bit more of a shadow onto the rest of the robe so 
that and I think one more over here. And I think we'll be good there. So let's see what else could be done to this guy. Um, I think I'm going to do the punch up the gold just a little bit. Gold looks a little flat to me right now. So I'm going to take some. What color am I looking for? I don't even know what color I'm looking for. I'll know it when I see it. Here it is. <laughs> take some gullum and flesh, which is normally meant for a skin tone. But I'm going to get my brush that I cleaned from the previous color, obviously. Dip it in some water. So it's nice and wet. Just wick the excess off. Still, brush is still quite wet. I don't know if you can see that, but and then I'm going to dip it in the contrast paint. So now on my brush is about 50-50 water contrast-ish. I don't know. And then I'm just going to paint it onto this gold. And this is sort of a reddish color. And red always helps to sell the richness of gold. So I'm going to do the same thing. Touch the brush in water. Wick it off on the paper. And then just come back in. And this very specifically, uh, maybe 20 minutes ago, I said you should never mix contrast with water because it'll mess things up. In this instance, I'm not coating with the contrast paint. I'm just using it as a shade on this. And so mixing that with a little bit of water will not be a problem. That will, uh, that'll sit on that gold and go into the recesses and be, be A-OK. -okay. So if you're doing this darkening with the contrast paints, what do you do if you make a dark spot that you don't want after it's dried and you can just wipe it well why don't we why don't we see what happens instead of just explaining it let's just do it so i'm just gonna take my my nice almost completed model here and take my leviathan blue and i'm just gonna be like oh no i got a line on him son of a gun that's terrible and now it's drying. And I never noticed it. And it's dry. And now I can't wipe it off. Crap. What am I going to do? All right, so here's what we do. I'm going to take some of the original primer, which was... I guess it was originally... I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to take some white. Some vampiric highlight. My go-to white. Put some out on a palette here. And so I'm going to take this and almost, almost like a dry brush, but not quite. A little more, I guess, more like an overbrush. I've got paint on my brush and I'm just going to wipe it across this mistake here. Sort of blending it in, not really blending it in, but feathering it out like this I'm just gonna go up here and feather it out to the rest of the robe like that then we'll let that dry but as you can see the uh the dark blue mistake is mostly covered. I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I've actually never uh, never done this process on this blue, so I'm hoping it works. This is the process I've done for other colors. <laughs> Hopefully it works for this blue also. Uh, while that dries, I'm just going to take a look and see if we can do anything else. I think the last thing we're going to do is going to take some of this Gore Grunter brown or fur we used on the staff. And I'm just going to highlight this leather a tiny bit with it. Just in the little recesses right here. Just put a little bit of a dark line. And over here. And then maybe some up there. And a little bit right here on the edge. All right. 
All right, so that white should be dry in the back now. Looks dry to me. So then we're gonna come back with our original color, Talisar Blue. And just like we, we had that dark line and then we put the white farther on the miniature than that white or the dark line was before, we're gonna start up here further on the miniature than the white. And I'm just gonna cover back over this white. Like that, and maybe put some over here just to blend it in a little bit. And there you go. There's your, once it dries, it'll look better. And obviously if you zoom, if you zoom way in, you probably still can tell that there's something going on there. Something funky happened. But if he's in an army or, you know, if you, if you just don't tell anyone, uh, people are not going to be able to pick that mistake out from the back of that cloak. So basically the process that you want to do is take a, a light color, like a white, feather it, put it across the mistake, and then feather it in both directions, and then take your original color and paint it back over, just making sure you go farther out than the white. Because if you just color the white, that will be an obvious spot. Hey, that's different. But if you go farther out on both the white and on the original color, it'll cover that back up and not show as much. Even right here, you can see something is different right there. So I'm actually just going to take a little bit of this and move it over here a little bit. There we go. You're welcome. Next time, next time there's a contrast mistake, you'll know what to do. Um, the other option is, depending on where your mistake is, if for whatever reason, if that process isn't an option, the unfortunate truth is just repaint the entire area. Like if there had been a mistake somewhere on here, maybe it wouldn't have been possible to do that feathering. You just repaint the whole thing with a primer or something and then paint over it. But that's the way to do it if you don't want to do that or you're too far gone to go all the way back or something like that. It's sorcery, yes. Maybe that's what... I should have, I should have called him the blue sorcerer instead of the blue wizard. Missed opportunity there. All right, so I'm just going to do the base real quick. Uh, nothing fancy. What's the other guy based in? The other guy is like a a medium brown and a dry brush. Oh, well, this is this is contrast, so I'm not going to use the layer paint. I will use... Oh, there's the color I was looking for earlier. Fantastic. Now that I don't need it. I'm going to use the darkest brown, Sigor brown. I'm just going to coat his base in this and call it a day. Um, he's actually glued to another base, uh, so I'm not going to paint that because this is just, that other base was just so he could be held by the uh, by the paint holder here. So he'll be popped off that base as soon as he's done being painted. So I'm just going to Paint this whole base brown. And then that looks good. And then if you wanted, you could dry brush that or something. And uh and then come back and and there's not really room for a tuft on this base, but you could add a little one if you wanted. Let's see. Do I have a little one hanging around here? Uh, yeah. Just for some just for some visual interest. I'll put a tuft. Oh, this tuft's wild and crazy. Turn that down a little bit. There we go. And put a little tuft right there. You know, Bob Ross would have loved tufts. I just have to say. It's your world. You put a happy little tuft wherever you want it. There you go. He's got a tuft on him. You should probably put one on the other side just to for symmetry. But no one will ever see the back. 
it'll just be from this angle. All right, so that'll do it for this episode. Uh, I will be back on this channel next week painting something D&D &D or beginner related. Not to necessarily equate beginners and D&D &D players. Just seems more appropriate since it's their one-off models. Uh, maybe I'll be painting a dragon. Who knows? Uh, otherwise, I will be in the 40K channel again on Friday working on my game mat. And then back on Monday painting some Warhammer-related miniature. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will see you next time.